Welcome heels and villains of Vajuk Enterprises YouTube channel. I'm your host Vajuk and I ask that you take a moment from your conflicts and relax as you enjoy this show. Today we are continuing with our conversations with Vajuk, which is my interview show. Today we are continuing my quest to interview all the people that have run tabletop RPGs. And with me today is somebody I know only as why not and why, if they want to introduce themselves any differently or clarify that name at all, this is the chance to do so. No, I've always liked why not and why, but uh, most people just shorten it to why for casual conversation. It's just simpler that way. And, you know, dear God, why is usually what people uh, have to say after I start talking for too long. But we'll see how it goes. Well... I've had plenty of people that talk for, I've had plenty, well, these videos have gone for between, and usually between 10 and 20, but I've had people push over 30 minute mark, and we'll see how long this one goes. Anyways, how did you, how did you, why get into tabletop role playing games? Honestly, it was jealousy. I heard a bunch of people had fun doing it. They talked about all these great stories where they did them possible things and it sounded like they were playing they were in a cartoon and they got to do these things and i was like okay that's pretty cool so i went to one of my little nerd groups that i hung out in because i had a lot of little nerd groups way back in uh junior high and uh they all said yeah we do this this is how you do it here's a book good luck learning it and of course i took that a personal challenge and uh, role playing was just something that came naturally to me. So I really did enjoy creating new characters, coming up with ideas, and it just kind of snowballed from there. What systems have you played? Oh, that's we. I've played just about every system that I can uh, get my hands on. In fact, um, me and a few of my friends have done homebrew systems from scratch that they're still tinkering with. Not that they're ever going to share it with anyone, but it's their system and they love it very much to pieces. I have done 3.5, uh, White Wolf, Ninja and Super Spies. Um, there was a few others. I haven't yet played any Shadow Runners. I have played Pathfinder. And um, I think that's pretty much it. At least that I can think of right now. How did you go from being a player to being a game master? Honestly, I have a smart mouth and it got me into trouble is the short version. Um, I'd always add in extra dialogue and everyone was really uh, impressed with how I created these silly characters and how I always would come up with these great one-liners and uh, <laughs> the DM would start end up laughing at the game longer than he would actually talk about the game. So eventually he said, you know what? I'm tired of competing with you. You get to run this campaign now. And I'm like, Duh, okay. And uh, so I ended up playing the game and uh, everyone enjoyed it. Even the DM who switched off. I think he was just burnt out and needed a break from being a DM at that time. But uh, I got a taste for it and I liked it because... I always liked uh, coming up with actual characters and real motivations for it. And it was so interesting to encourage other people to help me make a story and make the story more interesting because I could let them just roll and I could add in all these extra details. And they always had a lot of fun that way. Are there any systems that you refuse to run? As a rule, no, I don't really refuse to run them but every system in order to play it well you have to invest the time to learn it and like the happily married i'm not really looking for new ones um so 3.5 is kind of my girl at this point that said i have heard a lot of horror stories about gurps and advanced dungeons and dragons and would probably say it's not worth the effort to really get into those systems At least from what I've heard, anyway. Are there any? What's it, on the op? 
On the opposite side of that, what systems do you enjoy running? 3.5 is my girl, hands down. I know the system really well. I have spent so much time learning all of its little quirks and know all of its errata. So that's the one I really enjoy running because I feel the most comfortable in it. Ninjas and Super Spies is another fun one. It's a really lightweight system, but uh, that's almost something that runs against it. I find that in 3.5, there's so much material and opportunities to customize. If you have the patience to do it, 3.5 to me is always going to be the gold standard for role playing. Do you have any common health souls? I don't, and I do all at the same time. I have one rule, and it's sort of a house rule, and it's sort of not. The rule is, um, you use the book, I use the book. This is how I make sure power gamers don't get out of control. I have always said that um, they can pick whatever book they want, and they can use whatever rules they want. But I'm going to use them too, and the world is going to respond in that way. So it's always going to be the more dangerous or more powerful books you want to have, you get the powers, I get the powers. Every person who's played with at least one campaign with me refuses to let in anyone else play Book of Vile Darkness. They just know better than to give me that book. They know better than to give me Book of Exalted Deeds. They've learned that these things these powerful things existing are just dangerous and it's a two edge it's a double edged sword so it's not any other rules about changing specific mechanics no i don't i like rules as they're given i'm a lawful evil dm that's the way i roll are there any moments of the players completely surprising you that you would like to talk about today uh, there was a time where a player uh, completely surprised me, but I wasn't the DM. Still want to hear it? If you, that's what you want to share, then share it. Fair enough. Okay, this was in Ninjas and Super Spies. And I was playing a MacGyver character. There's, I could go into lots of details about it, but I was playing MacGyver. I could do and build anything, and I had a cybernetic enhancement eyes... There's a lot of fun stuff in Ninjas and Super Spies. And I was playing a class that was like, I know all sorts of bullshit. I can do, get away with using this class. And DM's like, yes, you could probably make this class work. Fine, try it. And so, so here I am playing MacGyver. And my girlfriend decides she wants to play. So she joins us for the campaign. And she listens to me as I make this convoluted MacGyver plot about, okay, what we can do is we can trap him in the building uh, through a lockdown scare. Once he's locked down and the building is secure, we can access the controlled systems and add a chemical gas that I can build into the vents, and it'll knock out everyone in the building. And uh, the in-game, her character said, yeah, that's great and all, but don't you have a poison drink that has an paralytic poison and isn't he a politician where you just go up and shake his hands and uh in a public area and he'd be put, captured for us why are we doing all this extra work and uh and in both in game and in, in person i'm sitting there going stunned but i want to do the cool thing i have this cool complicated plan and she's like yeah but that's the american solution why don't we just get it done quickly and I'm like, fine. And in the end, right after my character says, fine, everyone just completely loses it because it's just so appropriate that I'm going overboard and coming up with all these complicated schemes like my character should. And she's just like, I'm not that smart, but isn't it easier just to, you know, poison him with your poison ring that you've been abusing the whole game? Uh, uh, um, yeah, fine. So yeah, it's a great story, and uh, that's one thing that, as a DM, I always try and account for, is the fact that I can create all these convoluted plans all I want, but in the end, it's the players who are interacting who are going to control the story. 
I'm just there to help uh, make that kind of thing happen and to give opportunities for different perspectives and new plans. Are there any moments of everything going according to plan that you would like to discuss? Sure. Speaking of homebrews, I have my uh, favorite little game I play to introduce to people if they want me to DM. This is the game they get to play at first, and it's a very short game. And if they like what happens in it, they can play in a campaign with me. Otherwise, they really shouldn't have me as the DM. So, let me explain to you the game before I explain to you the story. The game intro is this. You are facing a lawful evil genie. You have three wishes. Do try and survive. And that's my challenge. And I had done this in a public area with a bunch of my friends for like weeks. And they all came up with ideas and I'd come up with these incredibly poetic, horrible deaths for even the simplest thing. One person like would tr wished for a cake and they got a perfect cake that was absolutely indescribably delicious and anyone would want it. Unfortunately, everyone and everything wanted it, including, including some giant man-eating ants who thought a side of human would go perfectly with the cake. These sorts of things. I, I went into a lot more detail then, but I don't want to stretch that out forever, especially because I haven't gotten to the point yet of the plan. This was all the hook for one person to just listen and try and come up with their most clever idea. And they finally gave me the, the first wish that I wanted someone to do. They wished to know the consequences of all future wishes before it happened so that they could uh, then wish and survive without using up all of their wishes. And I'm like, done. And so they go and they guess and they start doing a bunch of complicated wishes and I give them, you know, okay, you died this way. Okay, you died that way. And finally, in the middle of like the 10th one where they're getting really complicated and they're feeling really confident this time, I'm like, by the way, you just died due to dehydration. And they're like, what? How did I die due to dehydration? I didn't even finish my wish. Oh, your first wish killed you. He's like, but I survived that one. No, you've been living in a nightmare horror world with thousands and upon thousands of iterations of all of these horrible wishes and you just died <laughs> due to the fact that you've been lying on the ground in it, experiencing all these horrible wishes. And he looks at me like, you just made me waste like 10 or 20 wishes trying to survive and I've been dead the whole time? Yeah, essentially. You beautiful bastard! And uh, yeah, that one, that plan went perfectly. Kind of complicated, though. Okay, then. As my... As the penultimate question, do you have any advice for your fellow Game Masters out there? Um... Yes, I know. I even have a creepy soundbite to go with it. Your players want to be gaslit. Don't uh, hold back on the gasoline. What I mean by that is make their deaths their fault. Actually make them feel responsible for their own death. This is all about making it fair and not just doing, you know, rock falls, everyone dies. The whole point is if you're going to kill a character, kill a character for a reason. Kill a character for the decisions they make. Make it about them and their responsibilities. Make it about um, whether or not you convince them that they should have died then for those reasons. But lots of people as a DM start with the attitude of it's me versus my players. I'm trying to kill my players. Otherwise, why are they trying to fight? I'm the bad guy. I'm the villain of the game. Sure, I can go with the I'm the villain of the game. But you're supposed to be the clever villain. You want it to be an interesting story and you want the people to be captivated and inv involved you want them to think okay 
that was fair. No one wants to play in an unfair game. And so you have to make it feel like it's their fault. As we end this interview, is there anyone or anything you would like to shout out? After that um, last little bit that I said, probably no one wants to be associated with me anymore. Uh, so I won't be throwing out any shade. Uh, not even to some of the common people you and I play with a lot. And uh, if you want to pump up those people, feel free anytime. Till then, catch you later. I will talk to you in the... F I will be hopefully having Y back on this channel in the future because he is an expert in a game... I love that a lot of people have not even touched.